Hello everyone, my name is Dan Lee, and I'm currently outside of the Sierra Miniature Studio because it's a lovely day here in the Sierra Nevada mountains, and um, I was tired of being inside like I'm sure many of the rest of you are, and so I felt like taking a walk. Um, anyways, I'm going to be showing you guys how I paint uh, Death Guard vehicles, uh, specifically the Death Guard Land Raider that I think you guys probably saw in the thumbnail. So anyways, uh, sit back and I will explain the process. So I start off by priming the model with Badger Steinol Res Black. And then these are the initial base coat colors that I'm going to be using. Dark Flesh Tone, Beastie Brown, Death Guard Green, and Ethonian Camo Shade. So first, I spray any metal details with Beastie Brown. And the reason that I'm using a brown color for this instead of a metallic is because I want this tank to look really old and weathered. And so the brown looks more like rusty metal than a shiny metallic color. And I'm hitting details like the grating on the back, um, the LAS cannons on the side, as well as the heavy bolter on the top. These are going to be the primary metal details. Then I cover the entire model with a pretty solid base coat of Death Guard Green, just avoiding the areas that I've already painted brown. Don't worry about a little bit of overspray, you can always come back in and touch it up. Then I take some Ethonian Camo Shade and spray it through the airbrush. Um, this is to create some color variation, and I'm primarily shooting the Ethonian Camo Shade kind of in the recesses to make those a little bit darker. And I'm also doing this because the Death Guard army that I'm painting this tank to match uh, is based with Death Guard Green and then has Ethonian Camo Shade brush painted on it. But um, brush painting ink on a tank like a Land Raider that has a lot of really wide surfaces, you're just asking to get uh, tide marks or coffee staining or whatever it's called when an ink dries in a patchy fashion on a large flat surface, and that doesn't really look that great. So spraying it through the airbrush just to simulate the same color, but to not have that staining. Then I use Dark Flesh Tone as the dirt color, and so I'm spraying this all over the treads as well as all over the bottom of the tank. And generally people don't really look at the bottom of the tank, so I don't think that you really need to bother actually painting that. I just kind of base coat it with the general dirt color, and I think that looks fine. I also spray some of the Dark Flesh Tone up the side of the tank a little bit, not very far, maybe just like a fourth or a fifth of the way up, just to simulate some dirt getting on the side of the tank around the treads. I then also base coat the little faces on the Forge World doors with the Dark Flesh Tone as well. So to continue painting the demon faces, I use Bronze Flesh Tone, Dead Flesh, and Xerius Purple. And first I use a 50-50 mix of the Bronze Flesh Tone and the Dead Flesh, just to establish an initial kind of sickly skin tone. I'm also intentionally getting a little bit of overspray onto the side of the tank, because I want the faces to look like they're kind of emerging from it, as opposed to just being perched on top. I then thin down the Xerius purple and paint like the bottom half of the faces, like the eyes and the mouth, just to establish some color variation. And then finally I come back in with a little bit of pure dead flesh and do a very light highlight kind of on the middle of the face to blend the two very different colors together. So for the next step, I cut out some decals and then submerge them in water and let them soak for a few minutes. Then I use a flat headed brush as opposed to a round headed brush because I find that the flat head gives a lot more control. I fish the decals out of the water and apply them to the surface. And what I'm doing here is just wiping the brush across the decal to wick off any excess water and then drying it on the paper towel. And I just repeat this process a few times until there's almost no water left on the decal. 
here I'm just using my fingers to straighten it out a little bit more because I find I have more control with my fingertips than I do with a wet paintbrush, but whatever works. Then I'm just applying another one of the same decals to the gun on the side. So once the decals are dry, I'm going to fix them in place using Microsol and Microset. I find that Microsol is basically just a stronger version of Microset, so for this project I'm just going to use the Microsol. So using the same brush, I cover the decal in Microsol, and I'm also covering the entire immediate area around the decal as well, because even though Microsol dries completely clear, it can sometimes leave like a water stain along the border of where it dried, so if you just cover the entire area, you won't get any staining or any discoloration. So the next step is chipping, and for this I use German Camo Black Brown, thinned down to the consistency of an airbrush paint with Flow Improver, and Chainmail Silver. I also use these little pieces of pole foam to apply the paint in a random pattern, as well as my dry palette. And if you don't have a Smash Mouth CD from when you were 7, I would not recommend buying one, as any random piece of plastic will work almost as well as a dry palette. So I just put a little bit of the thinned camo black brown on the palette and then dip the pole foam into it. And then I kind of stipple it out on a paper towel until I get the consistency that I want. So then I take my piece of sponge dipped in the German camo black brown and start stippling the chipping onto the tank. And there's a couple important things to keep in mind when you're doing this technique. Um, one is the consistency of your paint is very important. Like, you don't want it to be too watery, because if it is, it will run and not look like chipping. Um, and if it's too thick, then the sponge won't create that nice uh, stippled pattern. It'll just sort of smear the paint on, which also won't look right. So the consistency of like an unthinned Vallejo airbrush paint is perfect. Like the chainmail silver that I'm gonna use in the next step, that has the correct consistency. Whereas the German Camo Black Brown, while it has a really nice color, that is very thick out of the bottle. So I like to thin that down with Flow Improver to make sure it's the right consistency. Um, another important thing to keep in mind is the motion you use when creating the stippling. You want to make sure and go up and down with the brush, like your j or not the brush, the piece of foam. You want to jab the piece of foam at it. You don't want to drag it or brush it in any way because again, that will just create smearing and that won't look right. Um, so I just kind of methodically go over the entire tank with the piece of foam and I'm kind of targeting um, the bottom edges of things because generally as the tank would be driving forward the edges near the front would take the most damage and I'm going pretty heavy on the chipping on this tank because it's a death guard vehicle and I don't even think death guard really wipe let alone you know repaint their 10,000 year old vehicles so I imagine this thing being pretty beat up but just kind of apply the chipping until you're happy you can also um, go over the decals a little bit not so much so to where you cover part of them, but just they're very bright and stark and white. So just going over the decals a little bit with a little bit of the chipping just kind of blends them in with the rest of the surface. So once I've applied the initial layer of rusty brown looking chips, I'm going to come back in with a secondary layer of metallic chips using the chainmail silver. And for this, I'm not covering as much area as I did with the brown chips. I'm just kind of doing uh, specifically the edges and anywhere where there's large patches of brown, it looks good to kind of break them up with a little bit of silver. And this is a very popular uh, scale model technique, like for people who paint like World War II tanks and that kind of thing, this is a very realistic looking effect. And I actually prefer this technique a lot to using something like chipping medium, because not only does it look more realistic in my opinion, but it also, it gives you a lot more control and it's a lot easier. And the chips are more in scale. Like the problem with using chipping medium is that you end up with very large chips that don't really work on something as small as like a 28 scale or 28 millimeter scale vehicle. 
and you don't need an airbrush, which is another plus for a lot of people. So for the gold details, I'm going to use Rhinoxide, Balthazar Gold, Nilac Oxide, and Gehenna's Gold. And this whole tank is just covered with little trinkets and baubles and gold details, such as these little skulls um, above the door hinges. Um, and I'm going to start off by base coating all of the gold details with the Rhinoxide. I also, any bones that are on the model, like these little skulls and this little rib cage on this, I don't even know what to call this, this Nurgle symbol on the front, I'm just going to base coat everything with Rhinoxide because uh, dark brown is also a good starting color for painting bone, um, not just gold. There's also these little Nurgle symbols in the wheel wells, paint those brown as well. and this little whatchamajigger on the back. It's like tow bells, like some trucks have tow nuts. Well, this has tow bells, so it sounds like, I don't know, Santa's sleigh as it rolls past. And so then once the Rhinox hide is complete, I come in with a dry brush of Balthazar Gold. And I'm also using a flat brush for this. I really like flat brushes for dry brushing because it helps keep the initial color in all the recesses while applying, uh, in this case, the gold over the surfaces. I also apply the Balthazar gold to every other gold detail, including the little skulls on the front. One of the nice things about dry brushing this on is it keeps the Rhinox hide in the little details, like in the eyes, um, so you get a lot more color variation there, as opposed to just painting them gold. Then I take some of the Nilac Oxide, and I apply this fairly thick. You can also water down Nilac Oxide to have it look good, but I prefer to just apply it thick and then dip my brush in some water and kind of feather it away. So you can probably see better on this slightly larger detail, but here I'm coming in with the Nilac Oxide pretty thick, just straight out of the pot, and just applying it to places where I think water would collect and therefore oxidation would form and then coming back in and feathering it out with water. And one thing too, just a trick when applying oxidation, is try and keep it to the bottom of things, because it generally wouldn't form on the top where water doesn't collect. Then once the oxidation is done, I come back in with Gehenna's Gold and do another lighter dry brush over most of the details. And I really like doing gold schemes in this order, because sometimes the oxidation, regardless of how much you feather it out with water, it's still going to stain a little bit. So by dry brushing back over it, it really helps um, blend the two layers together. Like for example, on the toe bells back here, um, you can just drag the brush across it, and as you can see, you're it keeps all of the different colors that were applied. Like you can still see some of the brown, you can still see some of the Balthazar gold, the Nilac Oxide, as well as the Gehenna's gold on top. So now to paint the faces on the Forge World doors, I'm using White Scar, Druchi Violet, and Seraphim Sepia. And so I get out the trusty dry brush again, and just dry brush over the flesh of the tank with white, which is really quite a grimdark sentence if you think about it, the flesh of the tank. 
But anyways, <laughs> these uh, these resin doors have a lot of great texture on them, like a lot of raised details. So to uh, pick out some of those raised details, just give them a careful dry brush, uh, trying not to hit too much of the um, recess details with it, so to create that contrast. And I know this looks terrible right now, it'll look better once it's ink washed. So then once the dry brushing is complete, I go back with uh, some Seraphim Sepia and some Druchi Violet. And the parts of the faces that were um, initially painted with the bronze and dead flesh tones, um, those I'm going over with Seraphim Sepia. And then the part that was painted with the Zarius purple, I'm going over that with Druchi Violet. And don't worry if the inks mix. Um, it, I think it actually looks really good when you mix inks. Because for some reason, you would think that they would just turn into a brownish color, but they don't. For some reason, even when you mix inks, they actually retain most of their original color. So this can be a really fun thing to mess around with, is having something be based white or based a very light color, and then coming back in with inks and applying the color that way. Um, it's sort of like the original painting with contrast paints. So the next step is an oil wash. So for this I'm using Mr. Weathering Color Black, as well as a little jar of turpenoid. And to apply it I'm using a liner brush, or a long, thin bristled brush, um, one that can get into recesses easily. And then I just dip it in the oil wash and allow the natural capillary action of the oil wash to kind of do the work for me and fill in all the recesses. I also put some oil wash in these little air ducts or vents or whatever these things are on the top of the tank as well as on the heavy bolters. I find that oil washes look really good over brown and it really helps uh, increase the definition since there wasn't much there to begin with. So once the oil wash is applied I then dip the brush into turpenoid and come back and pull some of the oil wash off of the raised surfaces where I don't want it. That may be a bit hard to see on camera, especially since I'm kind of shaking the tank around a little bit, but as you can see I'm taking off some of the oil wash and it really only remains in the recesses. So finally, for the fluorescent OSL effect, I'm going to use white ink and Green Stuff World Floor, Green, and Yellow. So I start by painting any of the details that are going to have the OSL effect with the Dollarani white ink. And the reason I'm using white ink for this instead of white paint is because the ink is very thin and therefore doesn't create the same amount of speckling that white paint tends to. Um, the only trade-off is that the white ink is very thin, and so you'll probably have to do more than one coat. Like, I think I did three coats um, on all the different details just to get that full uh, white opacity. Um, I'm also going to do quite a bit of OSL on this, like I'm doing these uh, little targeting systems on the tops of the LAS guns. Um, I don't want to get overspray onto the casing below them, so I just put a little playing card in here and just use it as kind of a shield to prevent the white from being sprayed downwards.
Now that the white is nice and opaque, I come in with the fluorescent green and start going over all of the white areas. And like the ink, these fluorescent paints are very thin, so I did three layers to really build up their full color. Also, I thought that this tank looked pretty good uh, before I even started applying this uh, OSL effect. The reason I'm doing this is because I tend to like OSL effects, and also this is going to help the tank match the rest of the Death Guard army, because those all have uh, fluorescent radioactive bases. And so I wanted the Land Raider to make sure to have that bright fluorescent pop color so that it matched the rest of the army. So this is what it looks like when the green is fully built up. Uh, like I said, I think this was three coats of it. So once the green is complete, I come back in with the white ink and highlight a small portion of each green area. And I'm not using as many coats this time either, I'm just using one or two coats of the white to create a transition from the green to the white. And then finally, I use the Green Stuff World Fluorescent Yellow and highlight over the white. I also go a little bit over the green too to blend the green and yellow together. After a couple coats of satin varnish, the model is complete. And here are a few still pictures of the finished project. Also, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments and I will try to answer them. Thanks for watching guys, and if you enjoyed, uh, consider liking and subscribing. I'm going to be coming out with more painting videos as well as a couple battle reports here in the near future. So have a good one, be safe, and I'll see you next time.